Today we will be discussing The Ecstasy of St. Teresa by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. This is work number 89 in our notes, and here is the general information along with some dimensions if you were curious about that. Feel free to pause the video and continue when you're ready. So this sculpture is located in the Coronado Chapel, which is also in the Church of Santa Maria della Vittoria. Just a note though for this work, we only need to know about St. Teresa and a couple of aspects of the chapel, so no need to worry about the church. Just some background about the artist. So Bernini was a prominent sculptor and designer, and he was primarily driven by his passion of spiritual devotion. His work fully reflected the Baroque era, as his work was centered on intense emotional expressionism and demonstrated a growing emphasis on human feeling and sensuality. He was also very interested and very involved in theater. He wrote plays and designed sets, and his theatricality is prevalent not only in the work of the the art that we'll be looking at today, but also in his other works. So for more background, this work was commissioned by Cardinal Federico Cornaro, hence why it's called the Cornaro Chapel, and it was created as a burial chapel, but also as a tribute to Saint Teresa of Avila, who was a Spanish nun who lived in 16th century Spain at the height of the Counter-Reformation, which was a reformation started by the Roman Catholic Church in response to the Protestant Reformation. So she was canonized, meaning that she was made a saint by the church, and this was largely because of the spiritual visions that she experienced. She had many visions, which she wrote about in several books, and Bernini depicts one of those visions in the work of art that we're going to look at. Here's just even more background. This is the vision that she documented, and here she writes, Beside me on the left appeared an angel in bodily form. He was not tall but short and very beautiful, and his face was so flame that he appeared to be one of the highest rank of angels, who seemed to be all on fire. In his hands I saw a great golden sphere. The iron tip there appeared to be a point of fire. This he plunged into my heart several times so that it penetrated to my entrails. When he pulled it out, I felt that he took them with it, and left me utterly consumed by the great love of God. The pain was so severe that it made me utter several moans. The sweetness caused by this intense pain is so extreme that one cannot possibly wish it to cease, nor is one's soul content with anything but God. This is not a physical, but a spiritual pain, though the body has some share in it even a considerable share. So she feels this spiritual pain as the angel pulls the spear out of her heart, and as this happens, she moans in a sort of spiritual pleasure as well, which is interpreted as somewhat sexual. Experiencing this type of sensuality and pleasure from religion is also known as bridal spirituality. Here's a close-up of Teresa's face. The pleasure is quite notable here. And you can see that through her half-lidded, or I can't tell if they're half-lidded or closed, but something like that. You can see it through her eyes and her parted lips. It's also seen in her body too because her limbs and hands are all quite limp like she's caught up in the ecstasy of the moment so she's also lying on top of a bed of clouds which makes it appear that she is ascending to the heavens the wrinkles in her gown suggest that her body is writhing underneath the cloth lending to the illusion of motion generally she wouldn't have been wearing this much cloth but here the copious amounts of cloth make the scene more dramatic and show us her religious fervor if bernini just gave her a normal amount of clothing she'd just look like an unconscious woman. There is a little controversy over the way Bernini depicted her. Some religious observers were outraged that Bernini presented such a heavenly event in a blasphemous way. There are also many historians who think the opposite. They thought that Bernini exploited the sensual nature of the experience to show off a greater level of spiritual awareness. So here we have the angel. It's smiling as if he's excited to penetrate Teresa with the love of God. The body is very graceful and with the floatiness of the light fabric, it's a great contrast to Teresa's heavy fabric. The weightlessness of the angel shows that he's from heaven and the weightiness of Teresa's fabric tells us that she is of earth. Now this sculpture as a whole is a wonderful blend of both movement and stillness. The whiteness of it contrasted with the polychrome marble makes it seem very heavenly because it appears to be floating in midair. Behind both figures are gilded wooden rays. Above these rays hides a secret window which reflects natural light onto the gold pieces, which then reflects a golden light upon the white marble statues. It enhances the divine atmosphere, adds depth, and gives it a theatrical effect, and gives the viewer an awe-inspiring experience. Above Teresa and the angel, we have a beautiful fresco showing the Holy Spirit and a white dove. The light from the window makes it appear as if light is emanating from the heavens and the Holy Spirit which seems to pour down upon these two figures. 
So surrounding these figures are ornate columns, and above them is a broken triangle pediment. A broken pediment basically means that the primary shape has become disrupted with other curvature or protruding shapes. As you can see here, here are some examples of broken pediments. The broken triangle pediment appears to be pushing outwards, which creates a sense of depth within this confined space. Now, when we look to both sides, we see some high relief theater boxes. In many commissioned works, as we know, it was traditional for the patrons to make an appearance with an artwork. So in this case, the Conato family, also, here's the patron, by the way, the Cornado family was depicted, were depicted as spectators to the sacred vision. The seated figures appear to be talking and gesturing to each other and demonstrate to the viewers of the work as to how they should act. The viewers are encouraged to engage in lively discussion and approach this with their own personal experiences as the church welcomes introspection and debate. Behind the figures is an incredible illusion or trône l'oeil. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's deception of the eye of architecture containing coffered barrel vaults, doorways, and columns. Through the combination of this realism and encouragement of discussion, we have automatically become part of this work of art. We're surrounded by it and literally inside of it. This stage-like space opens up the chapel and unites our world with the spiritual world. This was a typical feature of Baroque art. It broke down the barriers between the work and the viewers and allowed us to be deeply involved. So for the comparison, I chose The Calling of St. Matthew by Caravaggio. Just like the ecstasy of St. Teresa, it depicts a saint receiving a spiritual message from a heavenly figure. It includes the role of natural light coming from a window and having that light put emphasis on the main figures of the story. It's also in the Baroque style, making it a little theatrical. The characters appear to be frozen in the middle of an action, so that makes the individual seem more expressive. And finally, it had a goal of creating awe-inspired reactions from those who see the work. And that concludes today's presentation. Thank you!